Hi guys, welcome to this edition of Tony Reviews. I know it might look a little bit different me standing here next to a sideboard rather than kitted up in motorbike gear or in the van on an adventure. But um, I promise you it's going to be an interesting uh, series. This is, well, series episode. This is hand built from this, which this is or was a sheet of ply. And as you know, if you've watched the build series or if you haven't, the build series, you can watch the build series below. Um, building out of wood, I've never made anything before, but building out of wood became a massive part because I had to build this camper van because I'd set myself this challenge. And as the end sort of finale piece to the, the van build as sort of like the, the gift to myself of this final thing, um, I took all the scraps of my plywood and I made an end grain table, which is absolutely beautiful. And you can watch that in, one, in the, the van build series and you can see that table. And um, I was, I really loved the process. As much as it was the bane of my life at the time, I actually absolutely loved making it. You know, it was very therapeutic and uh, rewarding when you see that final product. And so end grain, um, I thought, you know what, I want to do that again. So at the moment, I'm building a kitchen for my parents. So I'm upgrading their kitchen cabinets by building new doors and some new units. And with the uh, off cuts of, of ply and stuff that I had, I thought I'll take those and I'll make something end grain. So I took a sheet of eight by four ply. I turned it into loads of these, probably about 70 of these. And then from that, I made loads of little pieces, which has made this top. So if you want to know more about how I made this bespoke, handmade, beautiful sideboard, with an end grain pattern on the top. Stick around, I'll show you more. Let's get rolling. So what I'll start by doing is ripping the eight by four sheet down into more manageable bite-sized pieces. So here I'm changing the angle of the blade to 45 degrees because each piece is going to be joined on its corner edge. This particular bench saw is the bottom of the range one from Screw Fix, and I was finding it really difficult to get it set on 45 degrees so I was really jamming it there and making sure that it was locked at 45 because with that sharp angle at 45 it's really hard to pass the wood through so what I found was a lot simpler was pulling the wood through. Putting the blade back to zero, I'm now going to run those long strips in and cut them into smaller 30 centimetre wide strips so that I can join them together more manageably. workshop and proper dust extraction the dust goes everywhere but at least it's outside and what I'm doing here is collecting as much of it as I can one to clean up but two I'm going to need it to fill in any imperfections in the end grain pattern I've got about 140 individual smaller pieces to work with. It's now the painstaking task of gluing each piece together to form a small 90 degree right angle. It's important that I clean the inside and the outside of the joints because they need to sit within each other comfortably so any outspill of glue will stop them sitting perfectly together. Okay. 
So I worked out I needed to get a minimum of around 18 pieces per piece. So they are 15 mil each. Just over 600 pieces here, which should hopefully be enough for me to finish the end grain pattern top. So you need to make sure that every corner of the end grain pattern is covered and when it interlocks so that it forms a solid unit. undulations in the wood there, there is a slight bow on the bandsaw and so not everything is completely flat so what I needed to do was then plane the top So this is now my piece cut to size. So after planing it, um, what I've now done is obviously cut it to size and it had to go to the edge of the last bit of the triangle. So it was very tight. Um, I've got just a little bit of movement all the way around, like a little bit of extra edge. So the next steps are sanding, which I'll take you through. You can watch that sped up. Then I'm gonna route the edges so that it's not so sharp it's just got a nice little chamfer all the way around and I'm going to sand it to start with with a rough old 40 grit and I'm going to take it down I think the best I've got is a 180 but I might see if I can dig out some I think I might have some 220 somewhere but I'll do that by hand so let's get on to sanding <laughs> cut everything because I looked at the dimensions and it was actually going to be quite tall but because it's got it's quite a solid piece it was going to be really imposing I thought and where I want to put it I want it to be less I want it to be a feature but I don't want it to dominate so what I've done is reduce the height of it so that the cupboards are more squarer and they're more slimline than what they were they were actually quite wide and took quite a big piece of the the portion of the thing up so this is the bottom part and I've marked out where the, each piece is going and these are the dividers so we'll have a cupboard here a cupboard here and then two shelves in the middle here so what I'm actually going to do how I'm going to assemble this is I'm going to biscuit joint it now I bought a biscuit jointer I've never biscuit jointed before I did a sample piece and um, it was really solid and I only put one biscuit in there but what sort of threw me was when I cut it and I put the biscuit in the biscuit flops around but what I didn't realize is the biscuits are compressed so when you put glue on them they actually expand with the the wetness of the glue in the joint and I mean there's one biscuit in there and it is solid so I'm confident that that's going to hold this whole thing together the only thing is 
assembly how I'm going to assemble it because if I put these uprights in and then I try and put the shelves in with the dividers um, I think it's going to sort of move all the joints around so I'm thinking to put all the shelfy bits together with the dividers and then on this so what I'm going to actually do is mark out where my biscuits are going in each thing with each piece so that it hopefully all slots together like a jigsaw. and there are loads of these and it's very difficult you get so lost in what's going where hopefully it's correct I'm delaying it's going to be uh, it's going to be biscuit joint at the time but this was a little tester that I did and that's got one biscuit joint in that and that is really solid but I might actually use it as a piece to butt up against so like that so it can sort of, you know, keep it square. So I want a biscuit joint in. So this is my first mistake with a biscuit jointer and it was not locking the depth plate. So that is the repair of the biscuit and I've just sawed it off with a Japanese knife which are very sharp and that and then I've made a new join mark there so it should let's just move that one along slightly very slight so this is a number 10 biscuit and this is what I mean about the biscuits being loose. So, you know, you've got quite a bit of wiggly, jiggly room. <clears throat> but once they glue, they set solid. And as you can see, that one that I put in there, you know, the glue was barely even set, but I mean... <laughs> So first off I'm making the two centre shelves and I'm locking these together so that I can slot these in and then put the top on. However I don't have clamps to keep these together so what I'm doing is using a mix of right angles and pieces that I've made to clamp everything down.
last bits. So I'm um, ready to cut the backing board that's going on the cupboards, but I've done all the bits that's going in the cupboards first. And when I look at it, I'm just wowed. Look at this. Look at that. The doors have got little catches on, on both sides. So they always sit nicely in there and they don't fling open or fly in and out too much. I'm loving that. I think it is absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I love it. That is going to be one of them things that you sit there and you're just going to sit there drinking your tea looking at the bloody thing. Anyway, we're going to get on to the next bit, cutting the backing board, um, because now I've done all the carcassy bits for the um, doors and the shelves and I've fitted all the hardware, all of that sort of stuff, I can now get on to making the backing boards because what was good about it, making it, was the backing was off and I could work on everything back to front so I could go through the back of the cupboard and line things up from inside, you know, scribe the doors because the wood's warped in various little places or it might not be 100% square. Don't forget, I didn't have clamps. So, you know, little things might be off here and there very slightly. And um, yeah, taking the back of the would allow me to scribe up those cupboards and just shave off little bits that needed to be shaved off. So it's only taken me all day to get to this point. But um, yeah, tonight is gonna be painting it. But I wanted to get a little look of it in raw format before I paint it because I don't want to forget what it looks like because I think it looks absolutely awesome I love it so it's painting day for the cabinet I'm using farrow and ball um, wood paint cabinet paint and I'm using the undercoat which is the dark tones undercoat because the cabinet is going to be painted in a dark paint which is uh, I'm using the farrow and ball railings uh, which is their number 31 paint and it's a black, but it's pretty much, it's almost a dark blue because it's a, it's a soft black, but it's very blue in its tone. Anyway, I'm at the undercoating stage. Here's the undercoating currently being done. Uh, I've stopped for a tea break because, um, because it's so hot and because the farro and ball paint is quite thick, it's very good at covering, but you have to spread it and move it quick. Uh, because if you don't and there's any little you know blobs off the roller or off the brush they dry and set very quickly and in quite thick lumps so you've got to move it quick this is the doors painted the shelves and the backing boards so i've just got to undercoat the sides and uh inside a couple of these little bits but most of it's done and then we're going to be on to painting it with the number 31 railings eggshell and this is the undercoat so i'm about halfway down so and this is a 0.75 litre tin um and one coat of the undercoat is enough you don't need two coats because the other thing is because it is so thick where i fitted the doors I'm hoping it's not going to make any issues in terms of uh, adding to the, the width around the doors because it's going to mean have to mean sanding and stuff. But I won't know that until the end when I actually come to putting the doors on because obviously I've, I've fitted everything, dry fitted, and then took all the hardware back off so I can get a complete finish. So, I don't know if I filmed the painting. It's actually, it's really bright there, so I can't go really, there. I don't know if I filmed all the painting, but obviously painting has been underway. Um, the cabinet is down there. As you can see, the color when it's in the sun is blue, but uh, it's pretty much a black. So it's nice, it sort of changes color depending on what the light is and stuff like that. The only thing with the paint is it is uh, it stays tacky for a very long time. So when I painted it and gave it the first coat, it said four hours between coats. So I let it dry overnight. I didn't rush it. You know, I, I did the, the first coat and it probably well, it had a good 12 hours, if not longer, to dry. 
Uh, but when I came down to apply that second coat, I could feel there was still a tack to the paint. Um, so if I was to sort of lift the cabinet or grab it or anything like that, you were gonna get sort of like indentation marks. So that's the only downside with the paint really, is that it stays tacky for quite a while. I painted the underside um, to put the feet on so that I could stand it up. And that was the first thing I did. That was the first time I used the paint. And when I put the feet on, which was the next day uh, after painting it, there was a bit of a tack there and even putting the feet on, you, you know, if you needed to move them around, you could feel it was slightly sticking. Today, when I touched it, so that's two days later, underneath, it's completely solidified. So it's hardened. Um, so I think it's gonna take about 48 hours for the, for the, the paint to actually sort of harden enough so that you can work and, you know, do stuff like hang the doors and things. But I'm really impatient, you know, I've been, I sort of worked on it the whole weekend to finish it, you know, to make the cabinet put it together. And this has been a three week project, you know, every weekend for three weeks. But in that one weekend, I made the complete cabinet. I put all the little pieces that I had together and then I've now primed it and now painted it. And I'm itching, really, really itching. I think it might, I'm, I'm, I should be able to take the I should be able to take this off because I don't think I'm going to paint it anymore. Um, so I should be able to take all this off and reveal it. So I think I should do that because that will give me at least a little bit of um, satisfaction for a while. The only thing is, if there's any overspill, any paint on any of these lines, I won't be able to rub it down, which is going to drive me mental. But I won't be able to rub it down until that paint is solidified because the dust that will come from it will end up sticking in the paint because like I said it really does pick up any dust any little particles very very easy um so yeah I will let's just do that let's take these off and see what it's like eh oh oh should I I don't think I need to paint anymore so far it's doing a good job can you see that? So that's where the hinge is, so that's why that's like that. But yeah, it's done, it's done an all right job. There's some little bits to clean up, which ain't gonna be too much. Yeah, some little clean ups, nothing too major at the minute. So it's looking like it's worked out all right with this masking tape where I doubled it over. But it is looking, it's coming together now. Yeah, that's lovely. I left the side bit as well to give the side a little bit of extra something. Um, just a few little clean up bits to do, nothing much. Side piece, a little bit of paint there. Uh, looking not too bad.
So I hope you found this week's video interesting. Hope it's given you some inspiration. If you've got some wood lying around, maybe give an end grain pattern a go. I would say it's very time consuming. It took me probably about eight days in total. And I mean, in terms of long days, uh, hard work to actually do this whole thing. So it's a big process. So um, like I said, I've done it over a few weekends. I even did cut all the pieces up before I went on holiday. So they were all waiting for when I got back, which was a lovely little thing to come back from. Uh, one thing I noticed actually, which was only in editing the video, um, if you notice those big gaps that I had in the pattern, I was thinking, why are they, where are these big gaps coming from? You know, it, I should maybe have some little ones, but why are such big gaps? And what I noticed when I was editing the video, if you look on uh, where I, I'm on the table and I'm just about to glue up my first pieces, there's two pieces that are not the same size. So it means maybe one of those strips, and I know that there was a couple of strips that were bigger than the others, and I put them to the side, or so I thought. I obviously didn't, I cut them up with the rest and then they are what threw the whole pattern out. So like I said, when you're cutting your wood, you know, if you can get it all exactly the same size, you're gonna have less of that hassle because filling those gaps and sanding, the sanding that glue back was the, one of the hardest jobs that I had to do in planing the top, that was really hard. So yeah, double check your wood sizes and hopefully negate any of those uh, problems or as many of the problems as you can. But other than that, it's, um, I'm absolutely in love with it. It's a fantastic piece of furniture. It really does bring the room together. I love the light, which you can say how bright you want it. I'll turn it off because I know it flickers on the camera. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful piece of furniture that I'm really in love with. And it is one of those things that you actually look at of an evening and uh, admire because you've put so much love into it. So like I said, I hope it's given you some inspiration. Um, if you've got any old plywood laying around, any old bits of wood, maybe try some end grain patterns of your own and uh, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you've been getting up to. If you haven't yet subscribed, you can do so by clicking the subscribe button. And if you click the little bell icon, that'll tell you when I next release a video. I'm not gonna say that I'm doing it every week because I don't, but when I do, you're probably gonna get some things that I've really put my heart and soul into. So click that little bell icon as well. If you haven't yet checked out the Let Us Live website, it is a website that is dedicated to motorcycles, adventure, and if you put Tony Reviews in the checkout, you get a 5% discount there as well. So until next time, safe riding, safe driving, happy adventures, and I'll see you in the next one.